Today we're going to perform a preliminary hazard analysis in aligned elements. If you have worked with risk assessments for medical devices previously, you have probably done so in an Excel sheet using a grid-like structure similar to this where each row represents a risk. The structure of that Excel sheet uh, is probably that the leftmost columns is about identifying the risk. Then in the middle, there is a section about evaluating the risk. Then we add some risk mitigations or measures in order to reduce the initial risk and we calculate an initial risk. And then in the end, there are probably some columns um, to signify the implementation, verification and rest risk problems. In aligned elements, we have selected to cut up these columns into different sections in order to provide reuse of elements that reoccur throughout the risk assessment. And it looks something like this. I'm going to start out by showing you how you can perform a risk identification in aligned elements. And we will use this design control type called hazard, which is a type of potential hazard. Then we're going to perform evaluation of the identified risks. We're going to mitigate them using risk control measures that we're then going to trace to some kind of design input requirement or specification in order to implement them. I'll start out by showing how you can perform a risk identification. In this case, we're going to use a generic list of hazards. This is something that is often used in medical device risk assessments. And the idea here is that for each individual potential hazard, you can then decide whether this generic hazard is applicable to your device. If it's not applicable, you're supposed to state why that is the case, meaning that you qualify the answer, why it's not applicable. And if it is applicable, you select yes, and now we will create a trace to a hazard analysis item where we uh, write down the identified hazard and perform an evaluation. The idea is that you go through all these generic hazards and evaluate them, whether they are applicable to your device or not, and in the cases where they are applicable, you can then create hazard analysis items. So let's do that. I do that by, in this case, clicking generate hazard analysis, which you already know from another video, is a way to create a new object and automatically set a trace. So we can now add an hazardous situation description. And add a foreseeable sequence of event. In the next step, we will add one or more harms to this particular situation. So which harm do we foresee happening from the situation? I click on this add button to get access to a number of harms that I've already predefined. And they are to be found under the harm category here. And you can add your own harms. I will select this harm, permanent injury. We can see that it's loaded and it's automatically associated with a given severity. So this is written inside the harm item. So every time we select this particular harm, we always get the same severity. We can now set the probability score. I would select four here, and we can see that the software uh, using a risk calculation that is of course individual to each medical device, deems that the combination of severity and probability for this device leads to a non-acceptable risk. So that is how you can identify and create and evaluate risks. As we can expect, the system finds inconsistencies with this risk. It's not sufficiently mitigated, which is to be expected because we haven't done any mitigations yet. So let's go and work on some mitigations. I will open this asset in full screen mode and I open it for editing. Um, the next step is to add some risk control measures and I do that in the same way. Now I click on the add button here to the right and I get access to all the measures that are already defined in my uh, project. So I can select one of them or I can create a new measure. And I then say that this particular measure when applied has a particular risk reducing effect. 
So by applying this measure, we now get from a non-acceptable risk to something that is still not quite acceptable, but we're getting there. Apparently, we need to use more risk-reducing measures. So let's add another one. And again, I add a risk-reducing effect. And by adding a sufficient number of measures that have in combination a risk-reducing effect, we can drive down the risk from the initial non-acceptable to, in this case, an acceptable risk. So now we're done with this risk. We can go and take a look at our measures. So these are the two measures that I just added. And if we open one of them, the inconsistencies will tell us that it lacks a trace to a design input requirement. So it indicates that although we have recorded the mitigation, it's not yet implemented. So let's create a new requirement for this measure. And with this way, we can use our risk assessment to drive the design of our medical device.